Alrighty, recording is going for the e-tron. Alright, so we are playing the version from um, Michael Lark. He is the, at the 8th place in the GP Barcelona. Uh, so we've got 4 Walking Ballistas, 4 Reshapers, 4 Thought Knots, 4 Realities, 4 Carnes, 2 Ugin the Ineffable, 1 Dismember, 2 All Is Dust, 4 Chalices, 4 Expedition Maps, 3 Mind Stones. We've got 3 Waste, Blast Zone, Caverns. The Cryptic Caves is interesting. I actually haven't played around with that card yet, so... That's pretty nice to try it out. Um, he's also got the Haunted Fengraft, the Ghost Quarter, four temples, and four mine, uh, four of each of the Tron lands. In the side here, interestingly, zero ley lines. I like this a lot, actually. He's got more cyborg slots dedicated to other things, which is very worthwhile. Three Tormod script. That's interesting. One Graft Digger's Cage, one Relic, one Liquid Metal, two Contortions, two Warping Whales, the Crucible, Ensnaring Bridge, Mycosynth, Worm Coil, and Emrakul. The other thing that I find interesting about this is that he's on zero, um, zero of the new land. That's that's really interesting. Thought that they would be playing that, but okay, we're gonna try it out. And that deck should be good to go and set as my current deck. Alrighty, this hand is not doing much at all. This hand's a lot better. Not a ton better, but Chalice on one makes it worthwhile to keep. Keep this and ship a mine. Alright, we're gonna go mine here and pass it over. here and let's go chalice on one see if that's good enough for this nonsense of hogak mm. Mm -mm -mm. that's two venge vines please tell me they don't have two one drops <laughs> <laughs> ah, it gets down to free if it is I'm just running out the ballista here on one in case we do need to do some blocks, take out some threats or something. It can potentially stop them from casting a hogak if they have multiple creatures. Next turn, we can go Karn, Tormod's Crypt, and hit their graveyard. So we just got to get back to our turn right now. Okay, we're getting pretty lucky. I'm not swinging because I don't want to... Um, if they have a castable uh, Benz Vine from their hand, I don't want to not be able to block it. Okay, we got there. <laughs> Hit some stuff, but it's kind of awkward. But the exiling is pretty worthwhile. 
Contortions can take off some of the stuff. The Tormod's crap, it might be worth bringing in a few of them because we'll be able to hit those. What do you guys think? Is there anything in particular you want to see here um, as far as what's taken out and what's being put in? I'm zero end bringers for this list actually. So I think we're supposed to take out these along with the dismembers. Just to clog up the board, I guess. But it's probably our slowest card. And we can trim one mind stone. Let's try it like that. It's a different sidebar than I'm used to, so normally I'm just bringing in the ley lines right now. Okay, we've got two Tormod Crypts. We're keeping this. And we've got Natron. This is disgusting. What are we doing to these people? I didn't play the other Tormod's Crypt thinking that I would want to hide it, but I would have been able to prevent a uh, Avenge Mine hit here. those other faithless lootings and I think we're just running out the ballista here just to have a blocker Here's a hog daddy. Okay. Not blocking. I think we're good not to block here because next turn we want to be able to take out the feeder. And we can do that with a ballista.
give up Arbalosa, take up their Feeder and their Vengevine. Seems worth it, and then we'll swing at them for one. Hey, King Mudkip, 701. Thank you so much for the follow. We could have prevented that if we had the, uh, if we used the ballista and shot the Seder. That's pretty bad for us. And Jackson630, thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, that was a bummer. The sequencing there, um, should have, I should have planned for the, uh, the Dryad Arbor to be able to cast the uh, Hogak because we could have shot the Seder in response and then it didn't matter what they got and we would have been able to uh, we would have only had a matter reshaper but mm -mm -mm. I felt good about that too after the double uh, Tormod script Should we be bringing in the relic and the cage as well? It seems like a lot to be bringing in. It does let us hit more though. See, because then we have uh, another relevant turn one play. Let's try that. Decent plays here. We can go turn one cage into a uh, reshaper into a map. of that right now. <laughs> I think keeping creatures off the board seems worthwhile, but let's just run out the uh, the reshaper. They don't have enough in the graveyard to really do much. Pretty good. Could have used another land, though.
of slash. Thank you so much for the follow. And for all the communication tonight. Really appreciate that. Stitcher. That land is great. We probably want to go map here so we can get Karn next turn. I don't think we really want to swing, get them three other cards in the graveyard. That seems a little risky. So let's just go map and we'll pass it over. I will land already, which is sweet, because we can block that blood gas now. Nope, they're not worried about it. So we aren't either. Temple. Welcome back. Uh, we're in match one, so you did not miss much. You got it. It's 10.30 right now. I think we can rush through this and uh, get a Mono Green Tron uh, league in. Who needs sleep anyway, right? <laughs> Snaring bridge to prevent some attacks, which is good. Not a big fan of this line, but I'm going to go Ballista for zero and then Chalice for zero to empty it out of my hand. Well, we're going to lose Karn. Yeah, no, I think this is fine. Actually, we'll just let it go. We can block one and then... uh Go from there. They can't attack with a Hogak anyway, and if they've got an Assassin's Trophy, then we're going to get blown out. We don't want to be in a worse spot because of it. Yeah, yep. If we can get both Smashers out. Right, they can only really have... Okay, let's block Bloodgast. Battlefield. Thought not. I don't think we can do thought not. Because we'd be taking eight. 
a little too much. Let's go Smasher. We're going to go Chalice on one. We pretty much need them to not have a Venge Vine or any way to recur it. Because then we can get two Smashers in play. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to two. Do you have a preferred uh, Mono Green Sean list slash that you want to send my way? That way I can make sure to play that one. Warping Whale is good. It'll keep us alive. So they have a creature card. Pretty much done for. Yep. Okay. Whatever one won the Pro Tour, you got it. Yeah, we could have gone that a little bit differently, but uh, it would have ended up with the same result because we could have played out the Ballista to block the Supplier and shoot. Um, I think the thing was we should have just uh, used Warping Whale on our turn. Would have been the key before they get a chance to draw in case that card they drew was the land. I mean, it was the creature card they needed. This is an interesting hand. Let's let's see how this plays out. We'll be the prison deck today. Yeah, two and staring bridges in the side. I can understand why you'd want to, but that seems really risky to me. That's like gonna be more often than not a pretty dead card. This this list is running the relic, and I think because it's running the relic, I think that's fine because we can just exile um, it and get it back. If you come up with a version of the sideboard that you like, though, just send it my way and I can uh, see if we can run it for the next stream for one of them. Uh, stream Decker should be updated for this version right now. Yeah, this list is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's running two Ugans instead of one, which is what we usually expect. Two is good, though. The, the lack of ley lines in the side is what I find really interesting. Chalice on one. This is not my list. This was uh, the top eight in GP Barcelona. Uh, 
Emrakul comes in for any of those like combo matchups, or it can even be worthwhile in a um, a control shell because it's a pretty hard answer for the uh, pretty hard threat for them to deal with. So. Definitely need another land. We didn't hit that. I think we're just going to want to pop this for a temple. I'm a big fan of Emrakul, though. When uh, the mono green Tron list uh, was without Karn, Great Creator, it had that. And I was always like pretty happy to get that resolved i mean you, you're usually messing with your opponent a good amount of times and i can't tell you the amount of times i've uh, killed my opponent with using emrakul and then going off uh using a combo deck and killing them with their own cards this is rough We're going to be just running out of Ballista here for a block. No, we can't. No, yeah, we can. No, we can't. If we do and block, their uh, their Goifs are going to be too large for our uh, Smasher to be able to block it. So that's too big of a risk, I think. But we are taking 8 down to 8. <laughs> much need them not to have anything. <laughs> Lily or a pulse and we're dead. Or a trophy. Yep. out the chalices let's bring in our mm, contortions for sure I kind of want to leave the worm coil on the side but I've got to bring in something else as well and I think I'm going to bring in the relic here Depending on their variant of green black hair working well, maybe a worthwhile addition to the, uh, being brought in, but right now I'm not really sure. really surprised by the no mystic forge i like that card a lot i probably should be play testing some deck that i'm going to be playing at the tournament because i have a tournament this week <laughs> Is there a way to copy and paste it? Uh, yeah, I mean, here is, like, so if you're on Stream Decker, you can just download it. If you need the, that's the list there for you.
Yeah, uh, I am split between Etron or playing another version of Scape Chef. I've just been really enjoying that deck, and I've been uh, doing well enough with it. I'm gonna get rid of this this Hex Drinker before it gets out of hand. Yeah, the the other version of Breach Shift I've been on, I've been three oneing, I mean three twoing and four oneing uh, in the last uh, four leagues. So I've been pretty happy with those numbers. Gonna run up this relic and eat the hex drinker to keep that ooze tiny. Getting it out, it's gonna also make any goifs they pay from play from that one just really small as well, so. Yeah, I've got plenty of time to practice it all week. I'm, I, I play Magic locally on Monday, and uh, Tuesday i got a work event after, but I'm trying to see if I need it to be uh, at this thing with my friend for Wednesday, because if not, I could stream one more night. I can use that for my uh, night that I would just practice um, decks that I'm thinking about playing for um, Saturday. But we'll have to see how that shakes out, because if the thing on Wednesday has to happen, that obviously would have to take priority. I think we're going to get Field of Ruined here. Unless they're just dropping out like a lily. Seems ballsy. Do they not care of us for Tron? They don't care. Oh, they got a Fulminator. That would make sense. Okay, we really need to hit uh, mana, so I'm going to crack this relic, because otherwise it's going to be way too hard for us to come back into this game if we, if we don't hit our lands here. That is rough. Yeah, this sideboard is much more interactive, and I do like that. Um, it still has a good amount of side, uh, graveyard hate. It's got five pieces, um, and they're, they're pieces that are relevant, right? Like Leyline, if you don't have the note in your opening hand, it's just not happening. I think I just lost visual again. I'm not sure what's happening here, folks.
Okay. Let's get it here. I'm back. I am not sure at all what's causing this uh, drop. We haven't had this happen. Alrighty. So, let's... We're most likely not going to be getting this in a way, so let's run out the matter reshaper. And we'll pass it over. All the cards in the world. Yeah, the triple cork tarmat script is really interesting. I like it. Because it's the easiest fetch up for Karn. Yeah, against the last deck, that's what I did. I brought in two of them. Yeah, I mean, the guy got top eight in the GP for good reason, I'm sure. And the sideboard seems like... I might tweak it a little bit, but it seems like in a really good spot. I have such a love-hate relationship with Dismember. And I'm honestly not really sure about Crucible here either. Uh, that's a card, like I said earlier, that I'm kind of moving away from. Um, I'd almost rather have that be that Trinisphere in that spot. And then I feel like I'd be a, a little bit happier with that. I wouldn't mind being able to fit in a uh, Spell Skite. Yeah, you hate it too? I, like, there's just so many times where I'm just like, this is the worst card ever. Forced to block that tracker though, and that's pretty bad. Is 
because they're gonna draw a card. It's gonna be a massive tracker. Don't think we're getting out of this one. Yeah, like if the thing about ley lines though, like if you're not casting it on turn zero, it's probably irrelevant. Because we're only playing it really because of the Hogak deck, right? So, like, casting it later on really doesn't matter. Let's let's move on with this one. We're just so far behind. So, like, I did play that version that we played the the Urborg in it, but I just don't think it really matters um, for it. I, and I'm okay with running an Urborg for um, if you want to play Dismember and you want more access to the ability to do it. Um, but I'm not sure if that's even worth a slot because you have to basically take away from your basic land slot, right? And you, right, this version runs two, some lists are on three. I mean, this version's on three, but some lists are on two. And, or you're taking away from utility land, and I don't think that you're not, you, there's no reason to take from your utility land. We're not doing so hot this league, starting off on an 0-2. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> uh, I want to keep this. <laughs> uh, if we get another temple, this hand's, like, pretty disgusting. Um, even without it, I don't know. Like, you can do some stuff with this hand. It's kind of a bummer that we're not on the play to just run a chalice out on zero to see if we can just mize them. Okay, this hand, it, it's, the quality of this just went down drastically. <laughs> not gone now. I'm going to lead off with the uh, the tower as a result. Uh, if we had kept the thought not, I would have played the temple. Alright, well let's start it off. Chalice on one. Can we climb all the way to three with chalices, folks? Can we do it. Yes, we can. Ooh, Legion's in. It's a good addition. Digging it. Pulse. Bit of a bummer.
Lily. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be making that goif bigger by discarding this chalice, but it still seems like what we should do. All right, they got allegiance and and a pulse in hand. We can kill that Lily though, which is good. It, discard another card. I think we want to go Karn. Minus Karn. Go get ourselves a crypt. Cast it. And pass it over. I think they can just activate treetop and kill us, but let's see if they actually do that. Doesn't look like it. Okay, they did realize it. This is just what we're on, right? We're trying to draw a card, see if we hit anything. We did not. This is it. Okay. Let's try just the whales this time. One whale and let's try both warping whales instead. I enjoy the Jun matchup more than the Green Black matchup. I think the Green Black deck actually does a pretty good job of like um, fighting us nowadays. So, and their their Field of Ruins do good work. Stone into Reshaper, and we have a Dismember. Ah, these hands aren't great, though. Gosh. I feel like Cryptic Caves should just be um, 
the other draw land. Right? Like, I feel like that just does more for us. And we can get in situations where we're drawing repeatedly off of it instead of having to sack it and draw. Because we can make ourselves go Hellbent. Not terribly hard. Well, at least they didn't take our Mind Stone. Because we just don't have anything. They got like seven cards. We've got like three. That's Bob. We're going to shoot that Bob so hard. Ooh. This is about the best land we could have drawn right there. So we're going to go Ballista. On. Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I guess we're just going to do it on two. And shoot their confidant. meant to click for this matter reshaper. Get another temple or just get some lands going and uh, this all is dust should do pretty good work for us, but opponent has to be rude and play that field of ruin. We gotta see if we can accelerate towards something more relevant. That's good. Yeah, Tron. Classic. Classic. Just walk into Tron. <laughs> oh, I feel the Tron luck flowing back to me, folks. It's it's coming. It's all coming back. This hand does not have anything going for it. <laughs> this hand feels a little bit better, but it's still not great. The Haunted Fengriff, I like that card. I haven't played it really much, but that random aspect I've just never really enjoyed, but... What a rude oof. Good thing we'll kill it. It's a rude boy. Oh gosh. Uh. As much as I want to get rid of that Bob, we gotta get rid of this Confidant. To... I mean, get... as much as I want to get rid of the Confidant, we gotta get rid of this Oof so we can get our map online and get more reliable land drops and whatnot. So, oh yeah, we're so good. We're so good. Professionals at this game. That's how you do it, folks. Just just rip it off the top. Can't thought seize that. 
Can't rip it out of my hand. Mm, we can ballista that for two and take it out. It's probably the correct call because then that can't get out of hand. Alternatively, we could have played Karn and just shot the um, and just upticked on the clue after it can't be activated anyway. It would have been at six, go down. So Karn might have been the better play. Okay, so we can crack the map. Hmm. We can dismember the Goy for the Confidant. can crack this temple play temple and we'll run out of smasher Yeah, Dan, that, that might have been the better call, um, is just go get Blast Zone. We could have ticked it up by one, and then we would have been able to take out both the Goyf and the Confidant. Um, the only thing that blows us out is like an Assassin's Trophy or a Field of Ruin. But yeah, that line very would have been very good, I think. So that, I think that might have been the way to go. But we'll see. I did it so we can... Uh, move forward on our mana while still being able to um like cast the smasher They took the bait. So great. I'm here. Just you and the wife here. Don't know who is in the background yet. <laughs> okay, what? Oh, that Liliana's rude. The person in my background? Tefri? He's chilling.
we would really enjoy a land. A ballista also works. Take out both their Lily and their Bob. And then we can... Uh, boop. Boop. I feel like just taking out a clue here. I don't want to fetch something up because then they can just remove it. If we can get the land, though, we can go for the Lattice Lock or... Um, if they ha don't have a creature or go for the Worm Coil if they do. Okay, that's rude. All right, they've got a push in hand and something else. If it gets back to us, we can at least drop the car and we have the six land now. Field of Ruins, fine. We're okay with that. Now this is a situation though. With having three lands exactly, I do not mind fetching up this crucible. Interesting. Play that. Minus. Yes. Worm coil. Woot woot. You got there? Finally picked up a win. I was feeling pretty down on myself not getting a win, so... We did it, though. We just had to draw some absurdly drawn ha uh, Tron hands. We gotta race through these next two matches in order to get you some Tron hands. Regular monogram Tron hands, that is. Yeah, I can deal with this. Dead? 
Are they gonna kneel form us to oblivion? No. I have such bad memories of going against this deck. I, I... There's the Allosaurus. Yep. They've effectively won. I'm trying to see if they're on the Jace version or if they're on the Maniac version. If they're on the Maniac version, we can interact with them with the Dismember. For some reason, they don't have packed. <laughs> okay, they're on the maniac plan. Oh man, that's that's some pretty tricky stuff. They gain life in response to it so they can draw seven more cards. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, so we want Warping Whales and we want Relic. I mean, I Relic Graph Digger's Cage. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And we're going to take out the All is Dust. And let's take out the Ugin. I guess we're bringing in the Emrakul as well, in case they get some weird odd hands. I think that's it. Oh, I guess we should bring in the Contortions, right? We don't need the Reshapers. We don't need to grind anything out. No beatdowns are necessary here. And Contortion can help us take out the Maniac. Yep. It's got a, it's got a cage, so we're going to play it. Stone into a map. Pass it over. I'm ready to die. They're gonna like pitch, pitch, force, blow those out. Summon Allosaurus. Neoform, get you. That's, that's what I'm expecting anyway. Oh, we're supposed to. That's, okay. That was a mistake. Um, other map. We should have played a Tron piece there. That was just clearly a misclick. Uh, I realized it as soon as I clicked it. Okay. That's gone. Can't be regenerated. How rude. Yep. So 
some high quality magic, folks. I, I literally feel like I'm playing against a legacy deck when I play against Neoform. Sure. I would like to do this in response. <laughs> we got us. I swear the deck always looks so good until I play it. When I play it, I feel like it's terrible. We're dead. All right, last one, and then we're gonna see if we can switch over to some Mono Green Tron. We can jam through a league pretty quick with that. And what is up, Isaac? Thank you for joining me. Mm, we can get a turn three thought knot with this hand. Not anymore. <laughs>
we're still gonna get a turn three Hogak. I mean, I thought not. That's not bad. Season Pyro. Let's run ourselves out of thought not, because we're reasonable. Take their card that's left and pass it over. Ooh, they're playing the Smiting Helix? That's spicy. Feel like I'm getting baited into a bolt. Nope, oh, it's just a push. Okay. So we can cast the all is dust no matter what so we actually want them to commit as much as they can to the board see if the last card in their hand is actually a spell other than that black cleave hey Ensign. um i actually don't because i've never bought ticks other than through the thi um through the mtgo store um I know you can get them from uh, some of the other places, but I've never bought them, so I don't really know about prices on those. Um, I personally use the... I don't think we want to block here. Um, I, I personally use the uh, trading uh, um, mana traders for all my cards, so that way I don't have to worry about, um, you know picking up the cards and then all of a sudden I have to worry about swapping them back and forth so this way I can swap in and out of decks pretty frequently which is really nice and all is dust here they got one card left looting and pyro in the graveyard that's fine I'll start beating them in But yeah, I don't know. That's what I would recommend. I bought my decks first when I joined M um, when I joined MTGO. Um, I still own like the I own Mono Green Tron and I own the majority of Etron uh, on here. But like, I don't know. I, I don't find much value in owning cards anymore after that last time where there was a massive drop in qual uh, in the cards prices. So I think we're ditching the chalice. Cryptic's uh, redraw, and then the Ballista can do a lot of good work against them. Rebler. No, I, I, I mostly rent. Um, like, so when I'm, because I'm always like rotating decks on the stream, I rent cards. Um, but I do also own some. I, I used to own like five or six decks on here. Now I only own uh, the one.
Let's take out the young peasy. I don't think buying into uh, MTGO is by any means like, like bad. Um, just for me right now with how much I'm switching over, um, it just didn't make sense financially. Because I'd be spending a lot of money to own a pretty ridiculous collection of cards. Well, that makes things more difficult with another reveler. Is a pretty great draw. I don't think we want to take out the revelers because then uh, Ugin more or less will just die. Let's just uptick and start generating some crazy value with these spirits. Yeah, if you're going to be buying, like, I think burn's pretty cheap, right? So, like, if you want to buy a cheap deck like that, I don't think that's unreasonable at all to pick up. Um, yeah, I think you can get burned for, like, a low hundred or so, depending on your version. So, yeah, I'd probably just snag that up. I think I used the MTGO Traders when I first started. You can get a lot of, like, discount codes, too, so you can, like, check them out and see what they've got going on. Monster attack, Ugin, that's cool. We'll take two. Yeah, you can get a lot of, I mean, you can get a ton of practice on MTGO. It's a big deal to me, being able to do that. All right. We're gonna take out the PZ. And the flyer. Yeah, I, I will definitely say that um, my quality of playing when I'm taking a more serious game on and when I'm play testing has gone up just because of being able to do moto and play or MTGO and get more in that way. Because otherwise you're you're in a pretty tough spot. Oh man, and they have the push. Why didn't do all that and then swing with everything? Draw a card. Chalice is not great here, but I think we're still running it out. Oh, it's cheaper. Oh, yeah, that's right, because of Ugin. Um, run up Mind Stone. We'll draw another card, and then we can Thought Knot, and get their Reveler, Chalice on one, and then Reshaper. This is stupid. I forgot how good that was.
think Uga should still be at one after this turn. And if they want to send in the Revlars, we'll chump block one, and then we'll go Mana Reshaper and then the other one on the other. I don't think that's happening. Oh, we're getting hit. Okay. It's interesting. Do they have a uh, Lingering? Oh, they have a Smithing Helix. Okay. Pretty good. Flashing it back. I'm so confused by their line. Karn, minus Karn. We can't lattice lock right now, but we can bridge them. And then we can go for the lattice lock next turn. Their smithing helix was really odd. They could have gone for the lethal, right? Shot. They could have cleared our board and swung with the revelers. I've never had someone actually make us walk through the whole thing.
Mm -mm. Now we just need to go get a Oh, we can get a relic next turn. Oh, wait, no. That's a mistake. We can't grab relic because we will get cast into the chalice and get killed. Um, so we're going to take... We'll go to one. Okay. That was a bit of a mis mistake. Because we could have just got rid of the chalice this turn and then gone through it next turn. But now they can swing with all their one ones. We'll go to one, but that's fine. That was a mistake. Do they have a bolt? No, they have a looting. We still have a chalice. Well, that was awkward, because we definitely... Okay, they're conceding. We definitely almost punted that entire match. I mean, that entire game, so... I want the chalices in this matchup. I think I'm okay with bringing in two of the Tormods, Graph Diggers, and a Relic in this matchup. Because we can go fetch up the other stuff, and we're just trying to like slow down their graveyard plan. Yeah, we definitely almost killed ourselves. <laughs> Debatably, our opponent should have just kept playing because we didn't have them under a lock anymore, but we were just... Um, yeah. <laughs> Almost punted that one. <laughs> I forgot about my chalice on one. This is not a bad hand at all. We can go map. We can get a turn three thought knot. out yeah you want to be careful with stuff like that because I mean that's pretty close to cheating at that point if you're if you're blatantly ignoring your own chalice triggers um, and you're aware of it it's uh, it's 
it's something you want to be very careful about because if you're doing that with intent, like if you do it accidentally, that's obviously a mistake. But if you're doing it uh, with the intent of bypassing your own chalice, then you're you're in the situation where you're blatantly breaking. Um, you're, you're 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 yeah yeah. If you if you forgot, that's one thing. But it's uh, just be wary of that kind of situation. Oh, he forgot about it. And you were aware of it. Okay. And that makes sense. Blood Moon, but luckily we've got this waste. Oh, gotcha. He would cast it, and you reminded him, and then he it countered it. That's even better. Yeah, someone forgetting their own chalice and countering the spell is almost always, like, a great time. I'm going to just exile their graveyard right now, because we've got another one in hand. Why they didn't cast that yeah and even like against mono green it's like fine it's not like a big deal because like you just rely on your o stones wiping the board eventually yeah with with etron as long as you get one of your few ways you're fine or the mind stones if you don't hit those then you're in a rough spot rid of their graveyard because they're only one uh, land away from casting that reveler so take them down sure another blood and why not well we'll be able to smash them down and we can hold up Dismember. It's pretty sweet. And next turn, if we get another land, we're also able to Blood Moon. We're going great. This is just a... Uh, it's Mardu Pyromancer, Shallow, it looks like. They're playing the Revelers. They're playing the Blood Moons that we expect. And they're using the new Season Pyromancer as well. So, kind of interesting. All right. Well, we ended that not as strong as we would have liked. But we did wrap that up. Um... And let's go ahead and end that recording.